We're back at Students for Liberty. Almost all of you have one of these things, a smartphone. How many of you actually worry that the government's going to watch what you do, spy on you? I mean, some people want to kill us. We all post things on Facebook or Snapchat that are embarrassing that anybody can see. It's, it's in the cloud. Why is it worse if government does it? My next guest says I'm out to lunch even for asking these questions. Kalia Barnes is with the Electronic Privacy Center. I I'm thinking about this the wrong way? Absolutely, John. So look, privacy is a fundamental right. And so is life. People want to kill us. Yeah, but when you're looking at it amid massive government surveillance, private companies gobbling up your information left and right, universities too, we have to fight now more than ever to protect our right to privacy. But I voluntarily give it to the university or to Facebook. But you actually don't. So as a student, right, you're going to class and your, your university says, we're going to use this particular email platform, but you didn't sign up to have that information data mined. When you're posting your information on Facebook, you're not intending for an employer or somebody who can make a credit decision or a housing decision to take your private information and use it in a way you didn't intend. But if I want credit, then I have to submit information. And if the best information is data mining my phone, what's the harm? Well, the harm there is that uh, somebody can take uh, information that shouldn't be uh, included, whether you are expecting a child, whether you have uh, a medical condition, your sexual orientation, information that should not be collected and use it against you in ways that you never intended. But the government says, in the case of our safety, that it's going to save lives. It's a best way to find a terrorist connection, not listening to my call, but this harmless data mining, just seeing if I have a lot of patterns of talking to terrorists, and then they'll get a warrant and get more. That's not what the Fourth Amendment requires. And when we look at it, the Fourth Amendment is the right of the people to be secure against, uh, in their papers, persons and effects against unreasonable government uh, searches. The idea is that the, the individual should be secure as opposed to government overreach. NSA says this is a reasonable government search. It's absolutely not reasonable. All of the records, all of the call records, that they were gobbling. This is ineffective and it's violating our Fourth Amendment. It's violating our fundamental right to privacy. They're clapping, but don't you think this might detect a terrorist attack before it happens? Uh, the information shows that this has not been the case at all. The current case that's big is the San Bernardino terrorist phone might reveal something about who they were conspiring with. Apple says, no, we will not find you a way in. And I, let me poll the audience. Should Apple let them in? No. So what Apple is saying is that they do not want to set the precedent that will then unlock the phones for hundreds of millions of Apple users uh, in these types of situations. Comments for Kalia Barnes or questions? Come on up. In my county, the county sheriff partnered with the feds uh, to bring in hailstorm devices which uh, gather uh, cell phone in data uh, in a dragnet manner without a warrant. Um, so this is uh, technology. Looking for what? Uh, just looking um, for uh, terrorists, supposedly, but they won't uh, provide the records. So uh, are there any uh, other uh, instances, uh, troubling instances of uh, the government uh, weaponizing technology to invade our lives and invade our privacy out there? Absolutely. So this would be one of the examples of uh, a fusion center where you have a federal government agency partnering up with local law enforcement. And it routinely starts off as looking for terrorist activities, but more and more you see a mission creep. You're catching petty crimes, you're catching drug dealing and, prosecution, and, your, and prostitution yeah. like that. So this would be a, a classic example of overreach and where we They would say, yeah, we're catching criminals. No, but here's the thing. We have a legal process, right? You can't just simply go and do a dragnet search of everybody in here. We have the Why Fourth not Amendment if we catch in place. Criminals? Because of a little thing called the Fourth Amendment, it requires a warrant. <laughs> process involved. 
What would you say to the argument of if you have nothing to fear, you have nothing to hide, or the other way around? Right. So we, <laughs> we hear that a lot, but, and that just funda fundamentally misunderstands the way privacy works. Privacy isn't about whether you're doing something wrong. That information belongs to you, right? Imagine where you have maybe a wife looking for divorce attorneys, and that information pops up on the family <laughs> computer. She doesn't have anything to hide. This is her right to look up certain information, and it's simply no one else's business going on, uh, going on there. All also, there may be various other things that you're looking at. Your information could make you uh, an outsider in your community, a pariah based upon political affiliations. It has nothing, nothing you've done nothing wrong, uh, but yet that information can sometimes be used against you.